All right, guys. So I also want to talk about this, which is basically uh, an investor who runs a, a fairly large portfolio uh, and works with Disney and invests in both Disney and Apple has been like, look, could you guys like stop being involved in politics? I didn't quite say it in that voice, but it was pretty close. So it says an anti ESG investor presses for changes at Disney and Apple. Uh, and basically what this is, is this guy uh, who his name's uh, Vivek. Uh, Vivek, Vivek Ramaswamy, Ramaswamy who, who has spoken at CPAC. So that, that yeah, I know that name. Um, so like, there's definitely a bias there. there but sure. there is a funny thing in here that feels like it's the biggest duh in the world. What's that? But we'll, we'll get to it. So uh, it says an activist investor who has been a sharp critic of so-called ESG or as they say, environmental, social and governance uh, investing at Apple and Walt Disney uh, is urging them not to engage in political discussions and to make employment decisions without taking in an individual's race, sex, or political opinions into account. Like, is that not already? What the hell is going That's on? In the law. That's literally the law. That is I the mean, law. Political of the affiliation land. isn't in the law, but should be. But, it is in but, DC. Yeah. He said Disney must act now if Disney continues speaking out on political issues that do not affect its business. It will face even greater pressure to act when they do. And the sides Disney will be expected to take won't be the ones that are favorable to its business. Like Good point. Climate, like climate change stuff. Like like. Anything. But I want to point out: Does this does becoming political make a company inherently reactionary? It depends. I think it makes you reactionary. The second you take a stance, you're now on your heels. Yeah, but I also think it depends on what your business is. Well, okay. Uh, if I mean, an it sets a precedent company. that you have to speak on every little thing. Yeah. That yeah. is relevant in you the moment. A lot of the best, the smartest celebrities are the ones who just don't speak on any of it because that way they aren't expected to speak when something big happens. The smartest celebrities are the ones that don't have social media presences. Yeah. But then that's also something that is like, if, if you're already an A-list or you got grandfathered in yeah, before social media it. even existed. Um, but like. I found this interesting because he's basically suggesting like a, the very simple premise that you shouldn't make business decisions on any other grounds than what is good for most business. profitable. Yeah. Right. What, what decision is most profitable? So this is like getting to my point that I often make, which is that people just don't want money anymore. Nope. They have ideological ends. So weird. There Disney are, there involved. are ideologues at all of these mega corporations who have redundant jobs who that add the, no value to the company are are sh just 100% drained. What was the job title you mentioned earlier? A diversity, equity, inclusion, marketing and communications. <laughs> It's like nine departments. That I cannot get, like, think of someone at, that was at CNN by the way, but I can't think of someone more redundant and more of a drain on a company than with a job title like that. So, so he also says he's, uh, he holds positions at Apple and Disney and in recently uh, launched exchange-traded funds that uh, invest in large public companies. The fund has roughly $11 million in net assets. That's not a whole lot when you really think about it. For, for asset management firms, yeah, sure. But like in, in reality... That is enough to like have influence. And I was trying to think of where I right. knew this guy. Like I have the book Woke Woke Inc. in my room, and I just haven't read it yet. So that's that's my own fault. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, a, a, a book that urges that argues companies shouldn't be swayed by politics. Strive Management's main fund, focused on energy, has three hundred twenty million dollars in assets. Earlier this month, he publicly called on Chevron to pump more fossil fuels Woo! over the next decade I love this and guy. slow spending <laughs> on its energy transition plan. His energy EFT or ET. ETF holds a position at Chevron. So he's got money. He's got um, uh, influence. He and he's taking. Uh, he can Good make a, for a, him. But it, it, it feels bonkers to me. Look, look, Bob Chapek, who is famously called Bob Chapek, mm -hmm. um, very profit focused, always has been. And as soon as he took over Disney, he started getting involved in politics. Originally, he goes, no, we're not going to be, we're not going to focus on it. But that was like right when the the parental rights and education bill came out and they're in Florida. So he got like screwed well, kind of into having to talk about it. And they clearly didn't know what they were talking about. Here's a, here's a conflict though. There are people working, there are executives at Disney um, and other media companies um, who are ideologues, yes, and who who want the company to make business decisions for ideological ends. Yeah. But there are also 
shareholders who are shareholders purely to have ideological influence too. Yeah. The, it's not all about money for everyone. I also want to point out that I'm not. I'm going to lay off the topic of ESG because it's a very, very complicated uh, discussion point. I've watched a lot of videos on it, and I know enough well, to they, know. Well, they that said I it's the loosely defined yes. practice of considering issues beyond short-term profits. I I, I know That's enough a very to know. Positive spin. I know enough to know that I don't know enough to have uh, too strong of opinion, other than the fact that I know that companies like BlackRock, which are heavily invested in this practice, uh, have taken uh, a lot of uh, money out of the economy in that, in that sense and put it into these practices, which aren't necessarily short-term profit-driven. But I don't know enough to say that. Like, for instance, mm-hmm. Warner Brothers has a higher ESG score than Disney. How is it less, calculated? Uh, I, like I said, I don't know. I just know that you it's, can look yeah. that, you can look up the score. So like I said, I'm not going to speak on that. I do know that it feels like the message is far more important these days. For the, the best example I could give you is Disney literally throwing money away by not editing their movies to be involved in China so that they can be involved in con- uh, countries like Qatar uh, where they want to, where they would love to make the money yeah. but are, are refusing to make the changes in their movies for the sake of profit. So clearly, on some level, that is true. They are choosing uh, ideological ends and over Marvel profit. Too. Yeah. And yeah. Mar- well, Marvel's yes. owned by Disney. so uh, uh, And that seems to be more posturing for western audiences Mm -hmm. and arguably i'm not saying this is correct but arguably they would say that's a smart marketing decision to make more money in like from western audiences therefore it's business savvy right this isn't about marketing i don't think this is about something overarching that they're trying to go for and the way that they define esg as thinking about something beyond short-term profit doesn't that sound nice Mm-hmm. Doesn't non-racist history lessons sound nice? That's critical theory. You need mm-hmm. to know what they're talking about because it is not as nice as they try to make it sound. James, if anybody wants a, a good person to look up stuff on ESG, James yes. Lindsay is constantly posting uh, a very, very deep, uh, deep dive analytics into that concept. Yes, uh, he's over on Instagram. Not but it Twitter says uh, he said. So this is back to Mr. Ra- uh, Ramaswamy. Ramaswamy. Uh, it says he's, he said Disney should make its all its decisions based on profitability without regard to social, cultural, or political pressure from employees, activist groups, or other stakeholders. Activist groups were the ones that launched. Think of Netflix uh, every time Dave Chappelle releases a special and a bunch of annoying employees uh, protest outside their own job. And this company has to basically act like babysitters and say, look, either work here or leave. We don't care. But Dave Chappelle makes us a lot of money. We're going to release it. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Here, I don't know. Uh, Disney being so heavily involved ideologically now, I don't know if they can get back out of this. I think they're kind of in it now forever. Uh, yeah, how do you disentangle you yourself? You wouldn't you be don't, able, right? They, they renewed Chapek's uh, contract for another two or three years, if I remember correctly. At the very least, it's not going to change until management changes, right? Because there's going to be the stink of his of the political ends all over his stuff. But and a with, lot of people would say that Disney has always had political ends. It's just that those ends have shifted to yes. something that they weren't before, you know? Yes. The company's uh, Political ideals. and social ideals. Right. Uh, well, yeah, because... Uh, uh, Walt That's Disney, unavoidable, right? Walt Disney was uh, was uh, an anti-commie, so he... Uh, well, he had a lot of controversial <laughs> yeah. opinions. That's. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's not really relevant, though. So, it's just the fact that, like, any media company, any entertainment company is going to have ideals and and messages that they are pushing and into to, society and to be fair the average person doesn't know this stuff is going on the i, I there are yeah. plenty of people who are blissfully unaware of how annoying <laughs> these companies can be and how annoying a lot of this becoming stuff becoming harder to ignore uh i mean because it's infecting the, the actual products uh, yeah, I mean, they, they might be aware that the uh, product is acutely di- is just different than it used to be, but that could be, what, modernity, that could be the world is changing, that could be a lot of things, not so much that Bob Iger wanted to run for president and Bob Chapek is uh, <laughs> is uh, being pushed around by activists. Yeah. yeah. So Now, Warner Brothers has a diversity, equity, inclusion czar, and four <laughs> executives are going to be answering to him to meet their 
their standards. Also very interesting considering when they brought in Zaslav and they and they canned the Batgirl movie and they kicked it into Woo. the next into the next dimension to where yeah. it will never be seen again. Um, yeah. uh, they it. were they were saying that he's a trampier in that he's a, that, anybody who can actually use that term without without dying of up, cringe. Uh, dying yeah. of cringe. <laughs> if you didn't release uh, an objectively poorly made movie that wouldn't You're, make the money back. Yeah. Uh, then apparently you're a trumper. But apparently. apparently people looked up his like his uh donations and he's given to like both parties. As a lot of them do, they give yeah. to both parties cuz they're playing you know, both sides so they always come out on top. Because uniparty. So uh it says uh it says a strong focus on diversity, equity and inclusion. We really need uh, okay. I really do believe before we go any further that a big part of this is just people taking advantage of the fact that a lot of people don't understand that there's a difference between equity and equality. Yes, there is a huge and difference. And they're playing on the fact that a lot of people don't actually know what equity means in the context of social equity, meaning that uh, uh, they want race-focused practices in hiring. They want race uh, and sex uh, and gender-focused practices with hiring and promotions. It's got nothing to do with equality. It's got everything to do with revenge. Yeah, so, I think so. so it says a strong focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion is a top priority for our company. And we are committed to doing everything we can to get this right because they're terrified of you coming for them and, and calling them bad if, if, if you don't. What you a know? bunch of... Um, well, that's already happened yeah. because they already faced criticism, it says, for their decision to appoint a slate of entirely white male directors to its board of directors and they had a relative lack of diversity in top executive ranks. I love how, so how they're, generic that, what is- They're DEI yeah. czars. Die, no, D-I-E. We, D-I-E. We, we, That's we, we, we right, get it okay, right. They're die czar, uh, and the executives reporting back to him Thank are you. really just, uh, they, their entire job exists to propagate the need for their job. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's like a professor. Yeah. They're only for uh, maintaining the facade of equity, right? And uh, it's not because they actually care. No. Exactly. It's beneficial to the Who is being line. fooled by this? Uh, um, I, I think a lot of people. I think we, we take, I think we are in our own bubble of information and we've taken in a lot of information and done a lot of uh, research into things that the average person just isn't looking into. Right. That's why so, we do a podcast, though. So I, 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 to people. I do, f- unfortunately, think that a lot of people are getting fooled by this. Uh, and it's, do you remember when uh, in Portland, uh, when the government was doing like racially segregated job training? Yep. That um, sounds like something Portland would do. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, Seattle was doing that as well. Uh, all that stuff is going on, and what it is is the average person goes, and this happens a lot. They say that sounds ridiculous, and because it is ridiculous, they ignore it. Right? They're like, "Oh, that doesn't sound real." Yeah, exactly. They, they, you hear about like, stuff I'm sure like this. It's not it doesn't sound real. It doesn't sound like it's actually happening. The Disney movies are fine. They're, I mean, we're like they're not fine, but the average person, like the movies are coming out, they're fine. Warner Brothers is releasing their stuff. What could possibly be that different? But at the corporate level, it's very different. Well, what we're told is that we are conspiracy theorist whack jobs for thinking that these executives and shareholders have some shared interests for like shared ideological interests, not business interests. Um, But then they openly can say that the goal of their die strategy team. Thank you. Is to drive long term change both locally and worldwide. They they are globalists. Yep. They want to use entertainment as the vehicle for global ideological change. Uh, right? Which is they, they they always find a way to dress it up in corporate speak that sounds so synergy. Banal. Yes, I love the word. Sy- it's my favorite thing. Synergy is it literally great like word. it's means nothing. Like you, I don't we think generate <laughs> solutions. Uh, they they literally sound like they've never actually spoken to an, an actual living breathing human. How do we make speak. this human? Yes, uh, the, these people don't. They're lizards. Well. They're definitely lizard people. <laughs> Like that again, it's like we don't say that because we literally think you're reptilian. We say that because you don't talk like a person. Yep. 
Yes. I mean, I don't expect the executives to talk like people when they're doing corporate speak because it's it's literally designed to be less human, like less human mm -hmm. and more. Uh, well, it's being ghost written for them, obviously. Yep. But obviously. Uh, but yeah. So and, and I also just wanted to point out that um, there's a VP named Christian Hug Aww. at Warner Brothers. Doesn't that just make you want to give him a hug? Maybe? Of a good Christian. A good hug. Christian hug. That's a good right. Christian hug. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Sounds like a euphemism for something. I don't like that. <laughs> what is a good Christian hug? Tell me more. I need to, mm. <laughs> I need to know. Um, so okay. beyond that, I want to point out that Disney is still very heavily considering uh, buying Hulu. The remaining, they already own like 75% of Hulu uh, and they want to buy the rest of it and incorporate it into Disney+. Plus. Yeah, they own two thirds. Yes. And they're going to own 100%. So uh, like. that is uh, Bob Chapek. The stand wars between these mega corporations. I love is Hulu like the too. worst part. Yeah. So uh, I, I love Hulu. I've been watching a lot of Hulu lately. So uh, I, I don't want to have an allegiance to any company. No. To no. any streaming service or any parent company that owns that streaming service. But they're stoking these like they, they want fandoms to exist behind mega corporation disney is the only one that actually so accomplishes weird. that no there is no uh, there, that's there why are, they're acquiring all the ip they're True. weirdo disney adults there are no weirdo warner brothers adults that's True. just creepy that's also just there are, yeah yeah Something no like they found out where the weirdo uh fandom adults were and just acquired whatever it was that they liked anything they like they're just like star we'll wars marvel we'll thank you thank this. you they're also like what they've done is so I, I i watched a really interesting video the other day they said they 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 spent the the 90s uh making movies that gave women unrealistic expectations about love and now that they've got them and made them 40 year old single women now they're just now they've turned them into fans of star wars which they never gave a crap about 20 years ago and they've geniusly moved them into like they've got cats they've got their star wars and their marvel which they never would have cared about when they were in their they've 20s appropriated them and into they it. and they got them there by by showing them that marriage was not feasible because mm -hmm. they were never going to meet the perfect guy uh, so they've li they've literally facilitated their own market and then bought the properties. They bought Marvel in DC, or I'm sorry, they bought Marvel and Star Wars because it was already a female driven business. Yep. And then they just turned it female, turned those projects into female driven uh, brands. Well, keeping the guys who are just you can't like, pretend to be the same thing that you were before after you get acquired by Disney. Yeah, That's and, true. and the guys are like the the poor Marvel guys who, who who can't admit that it's bad. They're like abused spouses that just keep coming back for more. Uh, so, or like so, Eric Butts, the <laughs> Star Wars Disney yeah. Star Wars like, reviewer. So I'll Disney Disney wins. <laughs> he's a, he, he's a YouTube reviewer that infamously literally like balls his eyes out at trailers for Disney Star Wars content. Yeah. Like I, he actually cries watching like a trailer for Andor. All that stuff made sense to me when they when they announced The Force Awakens. And it's like there hasn't been button. a there hasn't been a Star Wars yep. movie in a long time. A lot of people love Star Wars. Now it feels so It's abusive. Manufactured. It's literally abusive. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I feel exploited. I feel manipulated. I this is honestly like predatory. Yeah, I have even <laughs> had sex with Adam Levine. Yeah, exactly. Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.